Hello. Can people hear us? Hi, Internet. <laughs> Welcome to the Residence Life uh, webinar. Um, my name is Brenna, and I'm one of the Residence Life Coordinators here at Bishop's University. And I'm Warren, and I'm the other Residence Life Coordinator here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through a small presentation that we've put on for you guys. For anybody who has any questions about living in residence, why we love working in residence, and why residence is such a key part to your first and second year experience here at Bishop's University. All right, so let's see if this is going to work. It works. We're working. So residence is not just a room that you're going to live in. Residence is about coming together as a community and meeting all of your new friends. Uh, we put you guys in buildings, in the residence buildings that are located across our campus, but in very central locations. So when you live in residence, there's a huge convenience to it. There's a convenience of time. Uh, many people, alumni and the recruiters will tell you, you know, I can literally wake up 15 minutes before my 8.30 class get there on time, showered, dressed, and ready to go, uh, versus if you're not in residence, it can be a bit of a hike or a trek to, to get into campus. So we have that convenience right there. We have the convenience of the safety factor. You're living amongst your peers with other students who are the same age, similar you know, interests and areas of, uh, of study, and also you have security right there 24 seven to help you out. You have all the RAs there ready to help you out, which we'll speak to in a little bit. Um, you have all the food services right there as well. We have Dewhurst Dining Hall, which is central to campus with all of the residences around it. And you have the sports center, which is just a couple steps away as well. So the res experience, we have this just to show you guys. Um, there are a number of students who live in res. 70% of the first years do live in residence and those who are not in res, oh, I'm sorry, I went too far. But of that group who are not in res, the majority of them are either Quebec students who have already had a residence experience in CEGEP and choose not to, or they're commuters from, uh, from locally around the Sherbrooke area. So that's why we do have the majority. And as that slide showed, 70% of our students are in residence. So, Brenna changed the slide for me. This is perfect. <laughs> so, as she mentioned before, um, we have in our residence buildings residence assistance. And so, um, I'll just briefly backtrack. So, as Brenna mentioned and introduced, we are both residence life coordinators. So, we are full time professional staff who live on campus. Um, we have an our own apartments. And from the day the students move in until the end of April, when all the students move out, one of us is on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, just in case there's any emergencies or or if students have any questions or anything that professional uh, bishops representative needs to be aware of, we are here in case of that. Um, so that that is a part of our job. Another part of our job is we get to work with our lovely team of roughly 22, 23 resident assistants. And those are um, upper year students who we we view them as great role models and leaders on campus and they are scattered throughout the various residence buildings and they live on different floors kind of amongst the communities and are there for the students if ever they have any questions, concerns. Um, it, they're a great resource to ask like, hey, you know, do you know this professor or do you know when this ad drop date is? And because they are upper year students, they know the student routine and cycle and they can really help out anyone living in residence, whether you're first year or, or even an upper year returning. Um, so that is also part of their job. But what's another great part is they get to put on social events to help get all the students out there and integrated. And uh, next slide, here we have a great slide of some of the fun programs that our, our residence assistants have put on. So in the past, what we did, for example, last year is with the programming, we really try to get the students out there mixing and mingling and socializing uh, with one another within the Bishop's community, but also the Eastern Townships and Montreal in general. And so last year, for example, we took a few buses to Montreal where we did a shopping trip, did some art museums. We watched a, a Habs game at the Bell Center. Another great program that we did on campus here was 
The, in case you guys are not aware, the student on campus bar is called the gate. And so what we did is we paired up with the uh, student representative council and we did the gate Gatsby. And so we, we decked out the place and it was kind of 1920s flapper theme and it's a big hit. And so these are just programs that are put on all throughout the school year. Uh, just to get everyone involved, get out of your rooms, you know, get your head out of the book every now and then, and just to just to really get out there and and meet different people. So that is one of the benefits of living in residence. But another great benefit is Dewhurst Dining Hall. So I can say that I've been eating at Dewhurst <laughs> for I just finished my seventh year and. I still really like it. I still don't have a problem eating there. <laughs> and every year the food continues to get better and better. So everybody uh, living in residence, um, if besides Patterson, you will have what is called a continuous dining meal plan. So that means that from when Dewey's opens at 7.30 in the morning until 11.30 at night, you can literally go in as many times as you want and eat as much food as you like. Yes, there are certain times when hot dishes are served, um, but it, it doesn't matter because there's always different food options for you available. They have a grill where you can go up and you can order pizza, hot dogs, hamburgers, a grilled chicken breast, um, breakfast, maybe if you slept in and missed it. Uh, so they, they literally have different types of food um, for all for all, uh, yes, different types of eaters. Now, did you want mm -hmm. to touch upon the healthy options? Yeah, so, you know, the Dewhurst isn't just the grill, even though it is delicious and great. We do also have um, a rotating crepe station where you can go and get a custom, either a dessert crepe or a savory yeah. crepe, or you can add anything you want to it. On certain days of the week, we have salad bars where you go and the chef is right there and you pick and choose what items you want tossed in your salad with homemade salad dressings. Uh, there's a pasta station, stir fry station, as well as a rotating every meal. There's a couple options of a, a hot dish like a traditional lasagna or shepherd's pie or spanakopita, things like that, depending on the meal of the day. If you're a vegetarian, vegan, celiac, have any food intolerances or food preferences, we absolutely accommodate to those. Um, if you are concerned about a certain food requirement that you have, either come talk to Warren or myself. We're really great at, at helping you guys navigate the dining hall and showing you the different options that are available because sometimes they aren't as obvious as people think, as well as all of the Dewhurst Dining Hall staff, the managers there, are great in helping out. I I remember one girl was really concerned because she was allergic to sugar. We said, no problem, we got this. And they met with the man, the food manager and we were able to, to point out and navigate uh, that food intolerance. So there's so many options for students and many times they'll come to us and say, you know, I'm worried about the freshman 15 or anything like that. And ultimately it, it's your choice. If you choose to go to the grill every single day, three times a day, beware <laughs> you might want to head over to the sportsplex some more but there's tons of options available mm -hmm. um, another really fun thing that they do and there's one picture on the slide is uh, Trudy is a lady that you will all meet at the dining hall and she will love each and every one of you and greet you with a smile every morning um, she's there setting up for our Oktoberfest event that we do in October so when you want to touch on some of those? yeah so so what's really great about Dewey's is they're very tapped into the the calendar and what happens, um, whether it's Christmas, uh, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, and they, they have special meals according to those holidays. So, you know, if, if you're unable to get home for Thanksgiving, don't worry. You're still going to get that great turkey dinner with stuffing, mashed potatoes, and gravy. And, and Bishop's, uh, sorry, and Dewey specifically does a really good job at um, kind of helping you create that home away from home especially with those special meals. But what's also great about Dewey's is they have box lunches. So mm -hmm. if you know you're going to be busy and out running around in classes or group projects all day and you might miss your meal, all you need to do is go to Dewey's, talk to someone like Trudy and say, hey, I'm not going to be able to catch a meal tomorrow or later this evening. Can I get a box lunch? Yeah, no problem. You say what you want, you swipe your card, and then you pick it up later in the day. So that's another great thing about Dewey's. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. So if you have any more food questions, definitely type those into us and we can answer them specifically as well as answer any later on. Yeah.
So one of the things that you guys might have seen on our residence application website, the recruiters may have talked about it, um, is our living learning communities, the LLCs. So these, are, we have two right now. One is our leadership community and our other is the eco floor. So these are uh, a group of students who self-identify. The eco floor is students who want to live a more environmentally conscious lifestyle. So what we do is we have the students living together in one section of the residences with that RA specific to the programming of that community because you guys do do a lot more activities that are specific, you know, more catered towards environmentally and eco type stuff. So both of the LLCs do arrive a day earlier than the other students. So you'd arrive on Friday the 28th as opposed to Saturday the 29th um, because we have a full day of programming for you. We have a different orientation. Uh, you will be included in all the rest of the residence orientation. However, we do cater specifically to that group. And some of the many activities we do, we have pictures here. So the one picture of the outdoor picnic was a picnic potluck. So everybody kind of brought something of their own that they made and shared it outside. The middle picture is of a high ropes course that we do locally. And it's a really neat high ropes course that's in the trees and all these yeah. interactive uh, equipment that everybody gets to use. The top picture is a group of students that went to a local apple orchard and a pumpkin patch. So one of the really cool things about the Eastern Townships and specifically where we are is the environmental and the nature factor of it. We are lucky to have an abundance of trees and woods and paths and bogs and apple orchards and mountains and lakes. It's really quite the playground for anybody who likes the outdoors. So one of the things we do do is go to local apple orchards or berry fields or, or farmers markets and meet these organic independent farmers and ask them about, you know, how are you dealing with the disappearing honeybee in your honey production? Um, and how is that affecting the crop? So we do do a lot of things like that. Um, one thing we have on campus is an organic garden behind one of our residence buildings behind Patterson. So you, if you choose to be a part of the eco floor, or even if you just want to get your hands dirty, you can go back there and, and uh, pick some carrots or, or plant some perennials for next year. So that is something that's really neat about our eco floor. Did I miss anything with eco? Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, seems pretty thrilling. Okay. Yeah. So, and all of the activities aren't necessarily just outside. So we do do um, residence recycling programs and on-campus recycling programs. Use clothing swap. Use clothing swap is another great one that we do, as well as we have what we call like soup and speaker nights, where we'll have either different professors come in and speak to their own personal research projects or different things that they're doing, and usually there'll be soup. <laughs> and uh, everyone gets to to talk and, and hear those personalized lectures. So that is another part of that programming. The second community that we have is the leadership community. So the thing I really want to emphasize with this is it's for self-identified leaders. So this doesn't necessarily mean that you had to have been the president of your school student council or you mm -hmm. ran the prom committee. That doesn't necessarily mean that only those people get into the leadership community. It's someone who says like, you know what, I really think that this is something I would like to do more of or try more of, and those are the students we're looking for. So here we have pictures of students volunteering at a local soup kitchen. We have students after they hike to the top of a mountain. Uh, the other one's just purely a bunch of students. I'm pretty sure that was them playing Frisbee on the lawn. We took a picture <laughs> of them afterwards, just interacting so. with each other. And the other one's a panel discussion of student leaders from the leadership communities in the past, speaking to um, current student leaders saying, you know, this was my first year experience. This is what I've done with it. And this is where I'm going forward in the future after graduation. So some of those students, one was a volunteer in Thailand with our MESOT project. Um, another one spent a year at the University of Hong Kong. Um, another one of our students is going to med school. So there's a great variety of students who have come from our leadership uh, communities. Uh, we've had students from the program go to the Me To We convention in Montreal um, and just do lots of really wonderful things. 
We do a lot of personality assessment training. So we work a lot with the Myers-Briggs uh, Institute and we have a leadership coach here on campus that we work very closely with to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one and group counseling and coaching with all the members of the community. Yeah, I think, I think that's it for LLCs. I think so. Application. So with your application process, I hope everyone has already applied. And if you haven't, please do quickly because the timeline is coming up. Um, just because you filled out all the information, it doesn't necessarily mean that your application is complete. We do need a $500 deposit from you guys. If there are any issues financially or you aren't sure how to navigate the money to uh, our offices, please send us an email or give us a call. Uh, residents at ubishops.ca. It's all on the website. Ask for Jacques, Lynn, or Stephanie. They're the best people to answer those questions for you. Just so you guys know where the money is going, that $500 deposit, $120 of that goes towards um, three things. One is the residence activities fee. So that's kind of the bank of money that we use to put on all these different events for all the students living in residence throughout the year. Um, there's the application fee itself of processing everything and getting it ready, as well as a mattress cover fee. So physically, when you go into your room in residence, not only has it been completely sanitized, cleaned, uh, inspected by our resident staff, but every student gets what's called a mattress cover, yeah, yeah, <laughs> mattress cover yeah. <laughs> which is yours. So you have purchased that to show that, you know, like it's, it's clean. It's not like you're sleeping on <laughs> someone else's mattress cover. So that's what that fee goes to, to cover, which I know I am more than happy to pay. <laughs> um, the 380 rest of the dollars goes towards depositing um, on the first month's rent. So when you have your residence account statement breakdown, the first month's rent September is going to be different than October. And again, Jacques, Lynn, and Stephanie are the perfect people to answer those questions for you in regards to, you know, how much is each month? What am I going to be paying? Um, there's also a $700 payment by August 7th to hold that spot in residence. So to make sure that even if you've paid that 500, if you're debating between a couple schools, we know that after that 700 payment, you are absolutely coming to Bishop's residence. So we want to make sure. And again, that will go to offset some of your rent costs as well. That money just doesn't disappear and get absorbed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all residence fees are paid in one payment at the beginning of each semester. That way you don't have to worry about everything else. Um, however, the students can, or sorry, Canadian students, you do have the option of doing a monthly payment. I personally highly recommend as much upfront as possible. As a former student, it definitely helps. Yeah, I just don't need to worry <laughs> about it later on. A lot easier. Mm -hmm. Room assignments. So a lot of questions has been have been coming in as to who my roommates, how do I know that I'm going to be paired up with someone who's uh, like-minded. And when you guys first apply to residence, and if you haven't done so, you should get on it. Um, when you first apply to residence, you did a survey where it just ask kind of what your personality type is like do you stay up late do you do you drink or anything um, all those forms that you have filled out we have a whole team that's literally going through all the forms and finding like-minded people and pairing you guys up if for some reason you felt you feel as though you could have filled out that form better or or you weren't as honest as you should be contact the person front desk just so that if you are paired with someone um, it won't be completely different extremes and you are on the same level of what is noise, what is staying up late. Um, so if you feel as though you need to make some changes, please contact Patterson Front Desk and ask to maybe fill out that form again. If there are any medical concerns that you feel we should be aware of or, um, or because of any medical reasons you require a certain type of room, please contact the Patterson Front Desk as well and let them know about that. Um, depending on what it is, it may ask for medical documentation, but if you contact Paris and Front Desk, that's that's the best option right now. Mm -hmm. As far as finding out who your potential roommates are going to be, you will find out all about room assignments in general at the end of July. So mm -hmm. I know it's really exciting, you <laughs> want to know right away, but end of July is when you'll find out. So just be patient and you'll uh, you'll hear from Patterson soon. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so move-in day is Saturday, August 29th, starting at 9.30 a.m. Uh, we recognize that a lot of you guys are going to be traveling on the road. Um, you know, people will drive 10, 12, 13 hours to get here, and we're just as excited as you when you arrive. So what will happen is... You drive on to campus, there'll be lots of signs everywhere saying, you know, McKinnon this way, if you're living in Keener, turn to the right. Mm -hmm. There'll be balloons, there'll be lots of people wearing Bishop's Purple Polos saying, hey, welcome, come on in. Where's your new, where do you live, where are you going? And we'll direct you to your residence building. Um, you'll be then greeted by your RA team of the students who have gone through two weeks of training and preparation and are very excited to see you as well. They've been busy putting up door tags and doing bulletin boards and making signs and reminders and, you know, this way to the laundry, all this is stuff. how you do your laundry, yeah. <laughs> all the fun things. Um, and they'll be there to help you through all your paperwork and to help direct you to your new room. So please arrive at 9.30 a.m. because it's uh, it's a long and exciting day and that's when we're, we're ready for you guys. Um, and then you'll also head over to Patterson after you've moved into your room to get your student ID ready. You'll see the recruitment team who was there to help introduce you guys to bishops in the first place. You'll see probably us yeah. wandering around. We'll be Running saying around hi. Like crazy. <laughs> and you'll get, they'll have the business office there for any financial questions that you have. The library will be there. The Porter's office for your mail key. ITS. Everything you need. ITS for any computer help will all be at Patterson as well. Um, I hope that you guys are bringing friends and family to help you guys move in because sometimes carrying those mini fridges can get heavy. So we do have a parents reception with uh, Principal Goldblum in the quad that's around four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, which is a great opportunity for the parents, you know, to, to let you settle into your room, start putting up your posters, unpacking your bags, and then the parents come over they have a beverage, they talk to the principal, we introduce ourselves as staff to them, mm -hmm. and a lot of questions can be answered there as well. After that, we then all head over to Dewey's and there's a great barbecue for everyone, not just parents, but for friends, if you have a dog, if they can be there too. Um, and then after that, we start res orientation and our res rally right on the Saturday night. So it's a long, busy, really fun day and we're just as excited as you are for that Saturday. So, uh, so Brian and I sat down and we thought, okay, with this presentation, we really want to try to give you guys five, five items, which we think are pretty important to bring when you come to residence. And the first is a fan. Uh, Quebec, yes, is known for its uh, chilly <laughs> winters, but it can also get very hot here, um, essentially from when you move into the end of August up until October. end of October sometimes yeah. so we would suggest either bringing or maybe purchasing a fan when you get here uh, just to help keep that air circulation going and you know especially when you're on the fourth floor of Norton it's an older building <laughs> you're gonna want that fan to help cool you off um, the second item we definitely recommend it is a mini fridge um, while we did say you know Dewey's is a continuous dining meal plan you will never go hungry here at Bishop's I don't think it's possible uh, it's a really great option to have if you like to keep you know little containers of yogurt in your fridge for a quick breakfast in the morning before you go hop off to class or beverages it's really convenient easy to have great thing I definitely recommend having a small mini fridge yeah flip-flops are very important, especially since you're going to be sharing washrooms with other students. And even when it's just warm out, you're going to want a pair of flip flops. Don't worry if you don't bring a pair. There are tons of stores um, locally and, and in the Sherbrooke area where you can just zip off to to grab some bit flip flops for sure. Uh, the fourth thing we said was pictures from home. While Bishops is exciting and you're starting something new and you're going to put up many memories of your Bishops time in your room, having something from back home, pictures of family, friends, pets can really help because, yeah, as exciting as it is, home is home and you will miss it. So definitely bring some items or pictures from home. And then the last item is just sports equipment in general, skis, golf clubs, uh, skates. What's As we mentioned earlier, Eastern Townships has such a wide array of different uh, sporting activities you can do, right? We're so close to so many mountains for skiing in the winter. Um, golfing, when you get here, we have a eight hole, nine, 
nine, nine hole. hole, nine <laughs> hole. Um, I golf a lot, as you can tell. The nine <laughs> hole golf course rate that is owned by Bishops, which is attached to the end of the campus. Um, and if you are into a sport, odds are there are quite a few other people here who are into that sport as well. So bring whatever equipment you have. Um, and on top of that, I would suggest maybe bringing your passport too as well, mm -hmm. just because a lot of students ski at Jay Peak. Jay Peak offers amazing student um, uh, seasons passes for skiing and snowboarding. And it's just what, like an hour, hour and a half drive from Bishops. To and the, yeah, to that border. To, the, to that border. And students are going all the time. So bringing a passport would be a good idea, as well as your, your sport and equipment. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. border is very close to here. We're, we're yeah. right along the edge of it. So while we said an hour and a half to the JP border, it's like half an hour to the Stansted yeah, border. Yeah, it's close. It's really close. So those are kind of like our top five things that we suggest bringing. Um, Again, if there's any specifics, please do ask us and we're happy to do so.